everybody. Welcome back once again. Another edition of Inside the Headset. We call it Week 10. We call it Game 10. There are 10 games, Tom Crager, and that's the way it is. But on the phone with me, a man from Memphis. His name is Coach Thomas McDaniel, the head coach of the Christian Brothers Purple Wave. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I talked to you right before uh, I left to go to the Auburn game. You've had two nice wins since then. Talk to me a little bit about uh, Purple Wave football and what's been going on. Yeah, we uh, we played uh, St. Benedict two weeks ago. Yes, sir. 48-13 uh, uh, district uh, region game for us. Uh, you know, another Catholic school in town. So it was a big win. We played well. <clears throat> uh, I, I didn't think we played as cleanly at times as we could have. We um, you know, prepared all week for a, a certain defensive front, and they came and uh, showed us something totally different. And obviously, kind of played with, they, they they played with a little bit of a reckless environment and the way they approached defending us, and took us a couple of series to get used to it. But I was really proud of our kids for staying calm. We learned a lot there in St. Benedict week as far as communicating on the sideline, talking to the coaches, adjusting, and kind of fixing what issues we had. So we played well. Um, we did some really good things on defense. And then last week, uh, played a, uh, a team that <clears> has <throat> had football for many years, but had uh, done away with football due to their numbers. And just now, uh, kind of uh, this past two, two years ago, started football back against Memphis Catholic. And it used to be a big rivalry of Christian Brothers, but like I said, now they are um, kind of, I guess, reestablishing themselves in football. So, you know, we had about 30 kids. Mm. Uh, it's another, yeah, it's another one of those games that, you know, I told you, be quite honest, uh, we probably didn't need to be playing, and, and uh, but, but due to scheduling and whatever, uh, I think part of it was with um, the connection between the two schools. Uh, our school was, uh, you know, doing certain things financially to help them kind of get football restarted. I know we gave them a lot of equipment as well, so um, I know it made them look ugly from the outside, but it was really more of a, a good Samaritan act to uh, try to help get them you know, uh, going again in football. So it was a re really lopsided game, and, but but um, but we got to play a lot of kids. Our starters didn't get to play very long, unfortunately. That's been the case in a couple of our games. But uh, all in all, we're healthy. Uh, we're in a great place, and we get to, uh, you know, go into the AUS game, uh, you know, feeling about as good as we could, all things considered. So I'm excited about that. Obviously, it's the biggest game of the year for us, and it's week 10, and, uh, you know, there's a lot on the line with the uh, – the region championship for the west side of uh, Division Two Two A. All right, uh, play it out for me, Coach McDaniel. If you were to lose, what's that kind of? What? 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 what, what how's the cards lay if you lose? Yeah. Uh, if we lose, first of all, either way, after the St. Benedict game, either way, we secured ourselves a first round buy. Okay. So if finish, yeah, if you finish in the top two on this side, you get a first round buy, which is one of the major advantages of being on this side of the region. But. Uh, if we were to lose, we would uh, still host a second round game. It would be probably, uh, I'm going to say uh, right now, maybe Baylor, uh, McCauley. I, I, I'm not exactly sure. Right. I, I, I didn't mean the teams, just that, just that it, yeah. is it good? Is it, uh, can you play three games at home if you win? No. No, no. Okay. If, I'm, if we, I'm, if we, yeah. If we were to lose, we would host a second round game, and if we were to win that game, we would have to go on the road. Okay. The so the scenario that that um, that I, I'm focusing on is that we're going to win, and and we're going to win, we're going to uh, have the first round by, and then host uh, uh, the winner of Endsworth, Father Ryan, probably uh, in the second round. But but anyway, um, all that being all that being said, with with a win. You, you, you again, the, the, the division is set up in two regions. You've got a West and a Middle East. And with the win, you win the region, which would be huge for us. You know, obviously, it'd be huge personally just to, uh, first year to go ahead you know, to get the, uh, the region championship. And then, uh, you know, you secure home field advantage throughout the playoffs and secure points enough to, uh, you know, win the playoff game. You would host the semifinal game as well. So, uh, we, we got it. You know, I guess. Uh, metaphorically sitting in the catbird seat, we're in the driver's seat or whatever you want to say. We we've got it all in our hand. We just gotta decide if we want to go take it and we just get to you know, we get the challenge of doing it against the, the team in this area that's kind of been the traditional powerhouse over the last ten or so years and just happens to be our biggest rival and one of the cool things, you're a you're a uh, 
you know, I guess a, a football aficionado or whatever. And, um, you know, one of the things about the game that I think is really awesome is it's the 11th oldest uh, high school football rivalry in the country. Um, really? Yeah, they've been playing this game for a long time. There's a lot of, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, you had multiple rivalries in, in Rutherford County that, you know, I was blessed to be a part of. But, but uh, this one carries a lot of history, and it, it's the biggest one. I mean, it is about, there is no, uh, you know, it got to where the last couple of years you had, um, you know, you had the Black and game, you had the Seagull game, you had some other game. I mean, you got to where they were all big. Right. But this is, this is the game, and... Uh, I think uh, it would be a great atmosphere, great crowd. It's what everybody waits for. And uh, there's a lot on the line, so you can't really ask for it to be any better than that. And, and, and two uh, pretty, I guess, contrasting styles, too. I mean, they're very much, uh, you know, we're, we're not very similar in any, in any capacity, really. They're almost completely spread, uh, you know, throw it, throw it. Uh, I think they're the second leading passing team in the city right now in Memphis. Or Shelby County, I guess I should say. Okay. And we're the uh, and we're the second leading rushing team in the in the Shelby County area. So I mean, so again, uh, I, I guess we, we, we just do it both differently. And and uh, you know we we uh, you know we, we're going to run the football and they're going to throw it around. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not we can answer uh, the way they try to defend us, and obviously can we uh, defend the passing game. So contrasting styles and and. Uh, you know, a lot of states, and it should be fun. Uh, how do you match up? I mean, the big boys up front, your offense mm-hmm. against their defense, their defense yeah. against your offense. How you guys look? We, we, feel, uh, we feel pretty good about it. I mean, they're a little top line uh, offensively. They're probably a little bigger than us on the deep than we are on the defensive line. <clears throat> but on that defensive line, uh, first of all, our, our, both of our last scrimmages are, are the unsung heroes of our team right now. I mean, our, our offensive line is – uh, not drastically bigger than, than anybody we've played. They're definitely not as big as what you would think you would see in Division 2, 2A. Um, you know, we've got one offensive tackle that's 285 or 290. we got a guard that's 275, and then the rest of them are all about 230. So uh, we're, not, we're not small, but we're not big by any means. Right. Uh, but uh, we feel like our offensive line is bigger than their defensive line. They're, they're they're a they're a three three on defense. They've been running uh, the three three for for many years and been very successful at it. And just do a great job, uh, Coach Austin and Coach Chubb and, and the defensive staff at, at NUS do a great job with their defense. But um, they're they're all about six one six two two hundred pounds in that three three. They're six interior guys. They're all cookie cutter, very similar kids. And uh, six two you know two hundred is good size. Don't get me wrong, but. We feel like, you know, uh, up front, we feel like we should uh, wait on them a little bit and push them around. If we can handle their movement, they're very quick and agile and are going to penetrate and kind of disrupt. So we got to be able to handle their movement. Uh, we feel like that, you know, if we can do that, can be a, can be a, you know, a, an advantage to us. But they're, they're big up front on offense, and we're not quite as big on defense up front. So kind of again, similar uh, situations. I think the, I think ultimately. Uh, you're either going to find out that uh, they're going to have to beat us left-handed. I know we're going to try to make them beat us left-handed, and they're going to do the same. I mean, we're going to, you know, we're going to try to force them to, to run the football, and I'm sure they're going to try to force us to throw the football. So it'll be like I said, interested in to see how uh, both teams handle, uh, you know, uh, playing left-handed or, or you know, just uh, running through the brick wall even though it's standing there. So they can, you know, we can drop them all, and if they can play balls, we don't have any good answers. And they can bring them all up there, and if we can run the ball, then they're not going to have many answers either. So, uh, again, the contrast of styles is, uh, is, is going to be pretty interesting to see how it plays out. You, you, you're going to enjoy the physicality of this one. That's what you're telling me. Well, I mean, that's got to be an advantage for us. I mean, it, I, I'm definitely not going to say that it is an advantage because we don't know that yet. We haven't, we haven't won the game. Right. Uh, but, I do, but I do feel like, uh, you know, one of the things that I've told you before, but – I've uh, it's been such a privilege and a pleasure to watch our kids grow and see throughout the year the coachability and then just the the, uh, the maturity and the leadership and then taking the taking the changes that I've had to instill uh, and, and the coaching and all that and you know one of the main things that, that I've talked about is you know, you know we got to we got to learn to develop some toughness and to have a little edge about us and be a little grittier than our opponent. Let's you know it's okay to. 
be, uh, I don't want to say crossing the line, but I mean, you know, we want to be, we want to be running with the ball through the echo of the whistle. And, and, yeah, uh, well, I, I, I know, just be, yeah, be, 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 be brute physical through the game, you know. Yeah, so, so, uh, and I've just really, I've seen it, I've seen a maturation process take place. I think our kids believe in what we're doing. I think our kids believe that they are uh, more physical than the people that we played in the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, I, I think our kids also understand that what a great challenge it's going to be for us to see if we uh, are, are able to match physicality and be more physical than the U.S. Like I said, I think, you know, it's, they're, they're an old dog uh, kind of sitting at the top. And uh, last year, last year Christian Boats had a huge upset over uh, in U.S. on the last second field goal. They won 17-13. As time was running out, Christian Brothers kicked a field goal to win that game. So, uh, you know, with, you know that, I guess from their perspective, they, they want the revenge of the upset to last year. Uh, I would think that most people would still consider U.S. to be the favorite in this game for tomorrow night or Friday night. Most people believe that they're probably the favorite, but uh, they were picked to win our league and all that stuff. But I also feel like people do recognize that we're getting a lot better and I, and I think we're kind of hitting our stride right now. So we're excited about it, man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be packed out. This is uh, one of the reasons, again, you, you know full well the things that, that uh, are kind of instilled deeply rooted in the football and rest of the county. You know, this this was one of those situations where, for me, where I saw this game and said, man, that's, that's the type of game that you know, I'm used to being in. And that's been different for me. You don't, you know, you don't I really truly really appreciate some of those matchups until, you, uh, until they're gone. But every week, being in that that uh, that grinder, so to speak, is it's challenging, but it's fun. I mean, it really pushes you. And and uh, you know, this has been a different year. I'm not going to say it's been it's been a little less uh, uh, of a grind from the standpoint that we have some games where you just kind of knew going in we were going to win. And so it allowed us, like I told you before, it allowed us to focus on us and get better. And that's been critical because we've needed to work on so many things fundamentally. But uh, to finally play one where we really know, hey, this is a team that's right there, even with us, we're going to have to stand toe to toe for 48 minutes and see who's going to win the individual, you know, battles to ultimately win the war. We haven't, we haven't had many of those, and this one's going to be fun to, uh, again, get to do against a team that, uh, it's shy. Even though Memphis is a big city, man, we're probably, as a, as a crow flies, we're probably three miles away from each other. So we're very close proximity. Kids grow up playing against each other, and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of passion between the two schools. Well, you know, you you talked about that. It just seems like it doesn't make any difference. We uh, I do the you, you know I do the other coaches shows with other coaches, and they go through the same. But you know, it's like you said, if you're the head coach at Oakland, you know, you started off well. We got Blackman. They got two or three good guys on offense, two or three good guys on defense, and then yeah. uh, you play that one, then you go to Siegel. Okay, they got two or three guys on offense, and, yeah. two, you know, and it just keeps going. And like you said, you're, it, it, there's no letting up, and that's what, and that's what people don't understand is it's, it, every week it's, it's not the same, but it is the same. Right. Now, it's, a, it's a different type of grind. Uh, you know, I think when you look at the, the top end, I, I know for me personally looking at, just eyeballing. Uh, we do a unique thing in our league where we actually share video of, of the entire league. Yeah. We don't have to go behind each other's back. And, I like that. Uh, yeah, we just put it all on the file and dump it in there. And so you can peek at other people's stuff. And I can just tell you that, you know, from top to bottom, the league is just, and the league is everything I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's just, when you're talking about, I mean, you've seen Macaulay probably yep. you know, when they play Blackman, and Macaulay's gotten better since then. Ensworth is young, has continued to improve. NBA is very big in physical. BA looks like they got all the pieces right now uh, to be a to be a you know a deep runner. So Baylor's playing very well. It's just very good football across the board. Very well coached and uh, disciplined team. So you know we have great you know we have a great challenge this Friday. Uh, obviously, it'll tell us whether or not uh, you know whether or not we're ready for a chance to make a little run in the playoffs and. Uh, but, but this, again, I mean, you know, I told our kids this weekend, I don't know if you want to say it's a metaphorical scale or whatever, but this team, you know, this is the team that probably, aside from the rivalry, this is the one team that when you look at it on the film, uh, they're the team that measures up that most equal with us. You know, and I, I, I spoke to you after we played the CBC, and yeah. we, we really play above our head a little bit, our kids really bought into the underdog role and getting better and all that stuff. But we just played really well. We lost. But we, we took a lot away from that game that helped us. 
and I think it showed our kids that hey, we can stand in that play with anybody. But we had we had a lot of the lines, and they got embarrassed by them last year. And so, anyway, all that being said, this is really the one team that, at the end of the day, we're very equal. It's going to come down to a minimal number of plays. And, you know, it might be a play of the kitchen game. It might be a false start. Who knows what it is? That's why you play the game. But uh, we'll have to play our best football. And, you know, you should be playing your best football by week 10. So we're, we're excited about that and just kind of seeing where, where we go as we get to the playoffs. Well, if people would listen to coaches more often, they'd hear, well, we just gave up, we lost, or we got beat. You know, and, and those three endings are all three different. And people, you know, you got to listen close to what the coach is saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you normally, and you know this too, near the end of the year, uh, when you get to this this time of year, especially once you get to the playoffs, typically the better teams want to win. I mean, the, yeah. team that, the team that deserves to win the game is going to win. I mean, you know, we, we uh, uh, and, and that's what really the way I felt. Uh, most of the years that I was in Oakland, the years that we beat teams, I felt like we deserved to beat them. And if we didn't, we, we, uh, we didn't deserve to win the game. And, and uh, you got to you be playing your best ball right now. And uh, like I said, for us, fortunately, we're healthy. We're in a great time. I told our coaches coming off the field today, we just had a phenomenal week of practice. Kids are very energized and not beat down. That's different than what I'm used to, as you full well know. Right. This time of year, man, you're beat up. People are banged up. There's shoulder harnesses. There's leg braces. There's, you know, kids are, uh, you know, practicing once or twice a week, and then they're playing, and then they're hurt again. You know, we, we have been very fortunate that we've been so healthy. And I think a lot of that's attributed to the way we've handled them at practice. Some of it's attributed to our strength coach. He's done a phenomenal job getting our kids prepared. But a lot of it is, uh, you know, we've played a couple of tough games, and we've had a couple of games where we've run away with it. And, right. You know, I've often wondered, is that going to get you prepared long term? And that's still the big question. But, but uh, right now, we're just feeling really good. Healthy, mentally fresh, physically not beat up. And, and our kids have had a great – and we just had – we're having fun at practice. I mean, you know, we went out practicing in the rain on Monday. It was cold. Our kids were excited. We went out practice at a great time. And so it's just, uh, it's fun. It makes it easy. Our kids are so eager right now to get better. And, and, uh, and I think they're playing with a confidence level that they haven't had. And, and you know, you know, that's important. If they feel like they're, they're playing well and they feel like they're good enough to win, uh, I think that's half the battle right there. So our kids are, you know, they're not conscious about any stress, but they're, they're, they're feeling good about themselves. So I, that makes me feel good because ultimately, you know, the only one team's going to win it all. The bigger thing is just winning the championship and to know that you got a group believing in what they're doing and feel good about where they are and feel good about winning the jersey and going out playing hard for the team. Uh, that, that's really what it's all about. And you know, we're in a good place as far as that's concerned. Well, and you just answered one question. Uh, you're all healthy. I'll ask the final question. Special teams wise against MUS, how do you look? We just uh, well, we've been very good at special teams. Our punter is uh, the lead punter in the uh, in the area. Part of that is because he has a phenomenal leg. The other part of it is we haven't punted as much uh, as, as some teams. So, <laughs> but our punter uh, has been great. We've got uh, several guys that do uh, things in the kitchen duties, and they've done a good job. And, and, and that's another thing. I used the Alabama example yesterday after practice. You know, I don't know how closely you watched the Alabama Tennessee game, but I mean, the big tailback was on punt team for Alabama. The start and tailback. Did you notice that score? No, I did not. Okay. Well, they referenced it during the game. The start and tailback, is that, is that uh, what's his name? Is it, uh, Henry. Yeah, Henry. He, he starts on punting. And, and my point being, we've got some young guys that run down on kickoffs and are flying around busting people. And it's fun to watch them because it's their one chance to show out. But then we've got some veterans that are having to go in there and do things on some putt team and kickoff and stuff that are going to give them full effort. And um, so we feel really good about kicking it. We have two dynamic kick returners in both of our tailbacks, and we have some dynamic punt returners as well. So we've been very fortunate in the kicking game this year. Um, so, you know, we've got to win the kicking game for sure. But uh, special teams right now, to me, uh, we're, we're playing uh, very well in that, in, that, in that aspect of the game. But, uh, but they're also – you know, they, they, uh, they don't have that. They, they, they've had several strong kickers in the past. They don't have the, that leg that just puts it out of the end zone every time. Yeah. But, uh, they do, but they do a lot of things in the kitchen game, and they're going to have a wrinkle that we have to prepare for and that we'll have to adjust to and, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So, again, that's, a, that's another thing about this league that is different maybe than some leagues is the kicking game 
uh, really this, this treated as the third phase of the game. And, and what I mean is it's, it's prepared. I mean, you, you watch the teams in this league and kick off the turn, there, there's a plan. There's something that has been devised, and it's not as simple as run out there and walk through it for four or five minutes a week and then go off. And everybody has a plan, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's good to see that because it's, it's, it's sometimes an overlooked part of the game. So, well, you know, they, they say uh, – they yeah. say they're offensive plays. They say anything kicking is offensive if you do it right. That's right. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's a big fun. But, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll play a factor in this one for sure. Well, uh, 7 o'clock? Yeah, 7 o'clock at MUS will be at their place. It'll be a great crowd. Great atmosphere. weather's going to be great. And uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, for all, for all intents and purposes, it's going to be the game of the week here in Memphis. Some big games, uh, Cordova and, and uh, Whitehaven play for the region championship east and Ridgeway plays for the region championship, and obviously us in the U.S. But, but uh, so there's three great big time games in town. But uh, we feel like this is the biggest one. And we're excited uh, to be a part of it. You taking those girls trick or treating Saturday? Heck yeah! Even if, if we get beat, uh, you know what I'm saying. So still gonna get up. So we're gonna. Uh, my oldest is gonna be married us from Brave, and then uh, I'm gonna be married as dad. I gotta wear a kilt or something, and my wife is gonna be the queen, and then my Little and big is going to be the bear. So we got it all decked out. We're ready to roll. Rain or shine, we're going out. And we're going to get us some candy. That's what I love about you, Coach McDaniel. You, if you're going to do it, you do it up. You do it. You, you. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, Purple Wave and MUS uh, Friday night. Uh, y'all be there at 7 o'clock.